Theodore Roosevelt, Fighting Patriot, published in 1953, is a children's biography that delves into the life of the 26th President of the United States. Written by Clara Ingram Judson, this biography offers a comprehensive look at Theodore Roosevelt's life, spanning from his childhood at approximately eight years old to his passing in January 1919. As a young boy, Theodore Roosevelt enjoyed a life of privilege and affluence, but he faced the significant challenge of severe childhood asthma. His father, recognizing the absence of a cure for his condition, encouraged young Theodore to take matters into his own hands and find ways to strengthen his body. This early encouragement fueled Theodore's ideas of self-sufficiency. With a naturally curious and inquisitive mind, along with a deep interest in the natural sciences, Theodore embarked on a journey to reshape his body. To combat his asthma attacks, Theodore engaged in rigorous physical activities, including boxing, horseback riding, sailing, and rowing. His family frequently traveled internationally, providing him with unique experiences and adventures, even during challenging transatlantic crossings. Theodore developed impressive taxidermy skills, ultimately becoming proficient enough to preserve and mount many of his future hunting trophies and scientific specimens. At the age of 13, a significant discovery was made about Theodore's eyesight. It was revealed that he was extremely nearsighted, a condition that had previously gone unnoticed. This revelation explained his previous clumsiness and accidents. Equipped with spectacles, Theodore marveled at the newfound clarity of the world beyond arm's length, inspiring a fresh perspective on his surroundings. Initially, Theodore contemplated pursuing a career in naturalism, a path encouraged by his father. However, his father advised him to postpone this decision until after he completed his education at Harvard University. During his time at Harvard, Theodore often found himself as the odd one out among his peers. His short stature, blonde hair, slender frame, and shyness made it difficult for him to forge friendships. Nevertheless, he managed to successfully complete all his courses, maintaining a seat grade average. However, Theodore's life takes a tragic turn when his father unexpectedly passes away during the summer. This devastating loss forces Theodore to step into the role of the family's head, prompting him to make a solemn commitment to take both his studies and life choices more seriously. He diligently raises his grades to the 90s and decides to shift away from pursuing a career in science. After exploring various career options, he ultimately chooses to study law. Over time, Theodore finds his place at Harvard, forms meaningful friendships, and becomes engaged to the charming Alice Lee. At the age of 22, he marries Alice and enrolls in Columbia's law school. Although he finds the study materials somewhat dull, the theoretical aspects and philosophical dimensions of the legal profession captivate his interest. Having grown up in privilege with little awareness of the human world beyond the realm of science, he is now exposed to ideas related to class struggle, reform, politics, and the pernicious effects of institutional corruption. At the age of 23, Theodore secures a seat in the State Assembly of New York. He also publishes a book on naval history, earning positive reviews, and joins the National Guard. Life seems to be unfolding favorably for him until tragedy strikes again. Both his mother and Alice succumb to illness, with Alice tragically passing away during childbirth, just hours after his mother's death. Overwhelmed by grief, he perseveres, continuing his work. He champions a bill aimed at improving the working conditions of cigar makers, successfully getting it passed, although it later faces legal challenges and is ruled unconstitutional. Following another setback in his political career, Theodore withdraws from public life and embarks on a journey out west. There, he fully embraces the rugged cowboy lifestyle for several years. Eventually, he remarries his childhood sweetheart, Edith, and returns to the East Coast. His interest in politics and commitment to social justice are rekindled when he assumes the role of police commissioner in New York City. As police commissioner, Theodore's eyes are open to the harsh realities of poverty when he reads a book titled How the Other Half Lives. This book motivates him to take action. He initiates efforts to eradicate corruption within the police force, a move that earns him enemies among law enforcement officials, some of whom are deeply entwined with local organized crime rings. In 1897, Theodore makes the decision to step down from his position in New York and assumes the role of Assistant Secretary of the Navy in Washington. 
However, he eventually resigns from this post in the Navy and enlists as a soldier to actively participate in the Spanish-American War, serving as one of the Rough Riders. Following the war, his focus shifts back to the realm of politics, and he takes on the role of governor of New York. However, his unwavering campaign to root out and eradicate institutional corruption within the state legislature puts him at odds with other influential figures in New York politics. They orchestrate a strategy to force him into the role of vice president of the United States against his wishes, as a means of sidelining his anti-corruption efforts. This political maneuver proves successful, and they win the election. Tragically, when President McKinley passes away in office in 1901, Theodore Roosevelt, who had assumed the position of vice president, steps into the role of president. As president, Theodore Roosevelt is a proponent of progress, but he remains cautious about the growing power of the wealthy elite and the emergence of monopolies. He lends his support to the working class, advocating for higher wages and improved working conditions. Additionally, he demonstrates skill in handling foreign affairs and adheres to his famous motto, speak softly and carry a big stick. His leadership leads to a landslide victory in the 1904 presidential election. During his second term, Theodore Roosevelt embarks on the ambitious Panama Canal project and is awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1906 for his efforts to bring an end to the Russo-Japanese War. With his naturalist inclinations, he places a strong emphasis on conservation and establishes new national parks to both showcase and preserve the nation's invaluable natural resources. In the subsequent election cycle, Roosevelt experiences defeat at the hands of Taft. When the United States enters World War I in 1914, the 56-year-old Roosevelt expresses his willingness to serve, requesting to be sent into active duty, but his request is denied. Tragically, in July 1918, he receives heartbreaking news of the death of his youngest child, Quentin, who was shot down over France. Theodore Roosevelt, who had battled a long-standing illness, eventually succumbs to his ailment and passes away in January 1919. Theodore Roosevelt, Fighting Patriot earned a Newbery Medal nomination in 1954, with one notable feature being the numerous illustrations contributed by Lawrence F. Bjorklund. Throughout the book, readers are treated to frequent black and white pencil illustrations that vividly depict the scenes and relevant subjects, making it a visually engaging experience. While hard copies of this book are a rare find, as of the time of creating this brief guide, no ebook version has been released. However, a faithful reproduction of the book's content can be readily accessed on archive.org, where it is conveniently available for download in various formats. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.